Cool, but you wouldn't know that, you. Oh, um, but I'll, I'll explain why David's not here today. Um, but for those, just while we're getting the presentations up and running, who uh, could only see the, um, the slide deck here rather than what's going on in the room, there is strategically placed a, a sign board to the, to the side of the presenters that says that the mark of a good conversationist is not that you can talk a lot. Now, I'm not sure if that's a hint to keep your presentations short, but uh, even so, we'll attempt to do that. So, um, I'm Andy Blackall from Welsh Water, um, and we're picking up on port two, sorry, portfolio two of the evidence space, um, and I'll, I'll look to explain now why I, I'm here and, and Dave Goff isn't. Perfect. There we go. So, some background. The evidence base, it's really good to see that the, the previous project has actually got some on-site data and some hard, robust evidence that we can start to use now and, and inform um, future decision making. But a little bit of background really. Um, the previous uh, WaterWise projects on evidence base, first one concluded in 2008, the second phase then concluding in 2010. And from that basically there were some um, knowledge gaps, some areas that could be improved. And as a result the Collaborative Fund then commissioned um, this uh, further review uh, and update of the evidence base, really to refresh what companies and stakeholders had been doing around the subject of water efficiency. So Welsh Water were nominated as the lead company um, uh, and Dave, David Goff from Welsh Water was our project lead. We undertook a competitive review through our procurement process which was really good. And I think what they would like to sort of relay is how much competence there is in, in this part of the, the water sector in terms of supply chain um, uh, and capability in, in terms of um, leading projects. So that was, that was a really um, welcomed uh, insight that, that we found. Um, but ultimately the project was um, awarded to Artesia Consulting, um, which Rob will pick up on shortly. The importance of the evidence bit really, I wouldn't mind touching on. Just this week, the um, offer appointed task force for water proposed 10 recommendations for the water <coughs> sector, Gene relate, uh, related to that earlier. Um, but in there, um, there's a definition of water res uh, what water resilience uh, should mean to the industry. And I think starting with a definition is all important. And I've all defined a few of these words. I'd ask you just to keep them in your mind as we go into the next slide. Really, resilience is about the ability to cope with and recover from disruption and anticipate trends and variability in order to maintain services for people and protect the natural environment now and in the future. And really that definition really puts um, the environment and people centric to all that we're doing here today. So, an improved evidence base for the opportunities and demand side management is timely, uh, the timing of that is right, um, but it sets out challenges to those, and I think Rob's going to touch on this, um, who may be sitting on evidence um, or data um, that we could do more, that we could communicate more and share more of that information um, because I think there's a few themes that come through on the analysis which you'll be able to pick up on yourself. So finally from me then, um, just a, a, a view really on um, the, the uh, famous or uh, economist um, Keynes, um, Michigan Institute of Technology. Um, ultimately his view on it was, well when evidence change or, or events change then I change my mind and what do you do? And I think that's a key quote for any of us um, reviewing the evidence today, that we take something away from this and that we actually look to implement change based on evidence. You know, that, that's really important, that it's action orientated. So a little inside then, David um, Goff as project lead, oversaw the process from start to finish, which is really good. And he'd like to thank the steering group particularly for the support in progress in the project and the companies that willingly offered up some data. Um, that was really um, appreciated. It's clear from what Rob will present that not all data is suitable and um, his request is that we do more to share and communicate the efforts so events like this are absolutely fundamental. I asked you to remember some um, bold words previously. So the relevance of the task force definitions have come sharply into view particularly for Dave and his family. Um, he's currently experiencing a welcome disruption and he's um, uh, doing his best right now to recover. So in terms of what that means is for those who don't know Dave, that's Dave on the left there with the little arrows just about to click on, that's David, great stuff. And in terms of his recent disruption, 
Um, Bella Louise, I think, was born just recently. So people-centric again, it puts it right to the, 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 the um, centre to what we're doing today. You know, there's no better motivation to, to improving our evidence base and what we do uh, than to secure um, for our future generations. So a few insights there, but over to Ronan. Thanks. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> Good morning everyone, uh, thanks for asking me to talk today, just to acknowledge a few things, as we all know this work has been completed on behalf of the Water uh, Industry Collaborative Fund, and the project team that I've worked with were uh, myself, Victoria Ashton, Keith Ponsonby and, and Dean Marshall. So. so I'm going to go back a little bit, of, uh, back in time a little bit to when I first started getting involved in water efficiency. This. Um, was one of the first projects that Aquia commissioned on uh, quantifying the savings, costs and benef benefits of water efficiency. Um, and it looked at how we could um, establish some principles of research, some study design um, principles and, and give the industry some guidance in introductory statistics that could help everyone analyse the effectiveness of water efficiency. Uh, so I've highlighted the um, the storefront bit from Aquia website, uh, which things changed since, uh, shows how old this presentation is. Um, some of the graphics that I presented in the uh, in that <coughs> guidance, and that box plot actually comes from some work whilst, that I did whilst I was at Southern Water, looking at the effectiveness of dual flush toilets. So it's a very good bit of evidence because it shows that there is a very clear uh, before and after effect, and that those particular dual, dual flush toilets that we tested at Southern worked. Uh, and then the text at the bottom, which you're not all going to be able to read, just highlights the kind of fairly simple, but some people were and probably still are a little bit scared by uh, basics of statistics, looking at using t-tests for um, assessing the statistical significance of those sort of results. And we'll come back onto that in a, in a little while when we talk about the projects um, that we've been doing over the last few months. So um, Andy's highlighted a number of the uh, predecessor projects to this and again uh, it's worth acknowledging the work that's been done by uh, Waterwise and others in developing the evidence base over the last uh, eight or nine years. I think it's also worth highlighting that um, water efficiency as, as Waterwise have said in their um, review document which came out in the last couple of days has really become mainstream. There's a, a burgeoning community, there's a burgeoning evidence base. Um, this was something that uh, I pulled out of the uh, demand management bulletin uh, even as far back as February 2008, you can't read it, but most of those company summaries refer in some way to water efficiency in, in strategic direction statements. Um, and then I'll come back to that in a sec, but before I do, just to highlight as well as the um, waterwise work, there was some work done by the agency in uh, 2012 which was a review of the uh, evidence base. At the time there was about seven projects that were analysed and we've <coughs> reanalyzed those as part of this study so just to bear that in mind as we go through the presentation I'll come back to that in a little while. So yeah, um, water, water efficiency is now mainstream and these are excerpts from um, current business plans for <coughs> three water companies. Uh, Affinity Water are uh, committing to a 7% reduction in uh, per capita consumption uh, over the next five years. Southern a 10% reduction and um, Thames uh, that's 8 litres which I think is probably, um, can't do the maths but uh, somewhere in the region uh, a similar sort of number. So not only has it become mainstream but companies are starting to put down ODIs that relate to water efficiency, uh, some of which have got some uh, financial um, uh, implications associated with them in terms of the, uh, the periodic review. So this has gone from being a bit of a Cinderella thing that we've all been um, involved in over the last 10-15 years to something that really is mainstream and critical to the water company business model. So moving on to this project, um, I've highlighted the key objectives and then some sort of sub-objectives beneath that which you can read as you go through, but the, the principal aim was to carry out a review of large-scale water efficiency projects and those projects in particular completed since April 2010, so over the last um, five years or so. Um, and I'll go through the, the, the process by which we identified and then selected the projects for analysis um, as, we, as we proceed. Um, also look at projects that have undertaken uh, quantification of the impact of metering on demand and uh, projects uh, on rainwater and greywater harvesting systems. 
and then present the results in an easily accessible format and uh, disseminate them, which is part of what we're doing today. So the, this was the, the general overall project approach in four steps to identify suitable projects. Um, so we contacted all the water companies. We got about 50 project, uh, candidate projects for analysis. Uh, and as I say, I'll, I'll run through the criteria that we looked at to whittle that down in a moment. Um, we scored and ranked the project and recommended a number to review that went to the steering group. And then once we'd identified those projects for detailed review, we did a number of different statistical analyses uh, and some qualitative analysis on one or two projects, produced some uh, consistent uh, results, uh, which I'll run through in a moment, and as I say, report and dissemination. So these were the criteria that we used to filter the initial list of 50 or so projects. Critical at the, at the top there was, is the raw data available? We wanted to get access to the raw data so that we could analyze it in a consistent way across all of the projects and make sure that the results were comparable between the various projects that we looked at. We also needed to know whether it was going to deliver in time for the report, and there were a number of very interesting projects that unfortunately just fell outside of the window for our study. Um, we wanted to read the report, if possible, to see if there's some useful background information. Uh, and one important criteria is obviously can it be used? Are everyone involved in the project happy to share the data? And there's one study that I'll mention a bit later on where that was an issue, but it was sufficiently large and important that we reported it anyway. Um, we're only interested in domestic, mainly, although we, we were willing to spread the net a little bit wider for sort of non-households that are mainly uh, domestic use, like uh, you know, care homes and uh, student halls and so on. Um, and then some various bits of useful, other useful information that helped us whittle it down to make sure we had a representative sample. We were interested in a range of different interventions as well in terms of the, the actual water efficiency measure that was being uh, tested. <coughs> So uh, this was the short list of projects that were finally uh, agreed upon for analysis. Um, one thing you may well notice through that is there is a, a large number of Essex and Suffolk water projects on there. It isn't that uh, they gave us a big fat envelope or anything full of cash, but um, it really reflects their, um, their leading role in, in water efficiency in the industry and, and everyone involved in that past and present should be commended and I think it's uh, incumbent upon everyone in the industry to, to follow Essex and Suffolk Waters um, lead in this area. Um, the, the projects that we got were, were what they were, they were what fell out at the end of that um, uh, assessment process where we evaluate a range of different projects. The range of different approaches analysed in uh, and interventions analysed so although there was a concentration of projects from one or two particular companies, we, we felt it was still a useful and representative sample. There were three uh, <coughs> projects identified for metering. Um, the uh, South East and Southern Water projects were both large scale, oh, forgive me Helen, universal metering projects, I know yours is customer metering projects, uh, but where the company is looking to meter all of their customers over a, a relatively short period of time. Uh, the angling water study was a little bit different in that this was looking at how uh, customers who were already metered would uh, react when they had a in-home in display installed. So it's almost a little bit of a smart metering trial in a way in that sense. I mentioned that several studies had to be excluded due to um, their programs and timing uh, and I've highlighted uh, a, few, a few of those there, in particular the Thames Water Save Water Swindon we wanted to get in but couldn't uh, unfortunately and then there were a couple of other change of occupier metering projects that were also a little bit outside our, our time window. So moving on to the analysis, um, as the previous presentation alluded to, one of the big challenges with water efficiency is that you're looking for a relatively small signal uh, as a result of the water efficiency intervention, ideally a, re a reduction in consumption amongst a, a very noisy set of data. Uh, and so that's illustrated in the uh, probability distribution uh, top left. Um, the uh, blue curve is the pre-intervention water use and the grey curve is the post-intervention water use and the, the difference is, is very small. Also highlighted another box plot, this is actual data from the, um, one of the studies that we looked at in this project, Essex and Suffolk Water, water saving kits. Visually I'd say it's very difficult, almost impossible to discern 
any difference in before and after consumption, maybe a little bit around the, the outliers. Um, so we were faced with the challenge of how to do this in a, in a fair and consistent way and we came up with two main solutions. Firstly, instead of uh, comparing consumption before and after, we 